Welcome to Changelog, where we explore the latest updates, enhancements, and changes to New Relic itself. In each episode, we dig into the new features and functionalities as told by the people who envisioned, shaped, and even coded them. We discuss the inspiration and data behind the development, as well as common use cases and applications. I'm Leon Adato, one of the DevRel advocates here at New Relic, and joining me this week are Senior Director of Growth Engineering, Samira Ahuja. Hi. And also Hello. Senior Manager of Software Engineering, Kevin Yang. Hello. Hi. And finally, Product Marketing Director, Alan Baptista. What's up? All right. So before we dive into the nitty gritty of uh, today's episode, I want you each to tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe the work you do at New Relic and something you're passionate or excited about. It can be personal, a hobby, work related, anything you want. Um, Samir, why don't we start with you? Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, a bit about me. I live in Canada in the beautiful city of Toronto in Ontario. And, you know, even though I'm supposed to be a huge hockey fan, I'm not quite, but uh, they still allow me to stay in the country regardless. And it's, nice, it's kind of them, but it's very Canadian of them. Yes, exactly. And within New Relic, I'm responsible for um, leading our uh, business observability initiative and practice. Very nice. Okay, um, Kevin, how about you? Yeah, my name is uh, Kevin Yang. I, uh, in New Relic, I lead a team of uh, SAP ABABers, uh, Java developers, and also uh, SAP basis uh, experts uh, to develop this uh, SAP uh, monitoring uh, solutions. Uh, outside of work, I love to go outdoors, doing some hikings and or outdoor trail running. Um, actually, in 10 days, uh, I will go to the mountains of Vermont uh, to participate a Spartan race. Back that to you, sounds, guys. That sounds <laughs> horrifying. I never, <laughs> ever want to do that, but I wish you the best of luck. Okay. Yeah. I, and I that's, am... that's, uh, that's one of the mild ones he's done. So. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. Okay. Iron and Man that, type of thing. It, it takes all kinds. I am yeah, assiduously not. Yeah. Obstacle, obstacle course running. So we have to do monkey bars or swim in a muddy waters or something like that. So, yeah, yeah it's all I'm just thinking of it. Yeah, it's all good. You know, we can monitor it as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have your watch and you can tell when you're, you know, feeling like you're about to die. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> okay, fine. Okay, Alan, how about you? Yeah, last but not least, I guess, I am the product marketing director here at New Relic for uh, shortly and in, in soon to be a year, I guess, mid-September, I'll be a year uh, I'll get the year plaque here. So uh, wonderful to be here. I worked with product marketing for the last 10, 15 years. I uh, was with uh, Chef Software before here and with CA Technologies before that, as also as a product marketer. But uh, a little personal, I am dual citizen, Brazilian-American. And they did kind of kick me out some year because I don't play soccer. I don't samba. And uh, what else? I don't like coffee. So it's like, I'm sorry, we got to revoke your citizenship. And you got to leave. So no, I'm just not even sure you I can have, stay here. <laughs> I know I have dual citizenship, but I do do a mean Brazilian style barbecue. So if, if you guys are whenever here around in Southern California, I'd love to to, to uh, you know do some some Brazilian steak for you guys. All right. All right, all right. You put you pulled it out there at the end. All right, I was I was really getting worried for you. Okay, well, um, take, let's, up, take up your offer. Yeah. <laughs> really, party at Alan's house. Seriously. <clears throat> Um, yeah. To the audience, you heard it here first. If you have like 9 million people who watch Changelog show up at your house, Alan, you brought that on yourself. <laughs> totally. Bring it on. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, get to work. Uh, I want to be respectful of uh, your time. If you've worked in IT for more than, say, 15 minutes, you've probably heard of SAP. And, you know, hearing the acronym and knowing what it does or understanding how it does what it does are entirely different things. So uh, I'm just curious, who wants to try to give like a 10 second, more than 10 seconds, but just a sound bite of what SAP is? I can do that. Okay. Um, well, some, some of the SAP stats, I guess, um, it, it was founded in 1972, actually. So it's, it's, it's quite, you know, tenured in the marketplace and uh, we have they have i think over 110,000 employees around the world uh they're headquartered in in germany um so very very german structure very uh, manufacturing focused and and centered uh in their business erp 
kind kind of setting. They're quite large. They have twenty seven billion dollars in revenue in twenty twenty one, and they have ambitions to get to thirty six billion euros by twenty twenty five. So, um, SAP. There's such a distributed software that that they, they claim that that they generate eighty seven percent of total global global commerce passes through them. Forty-six trillion dollars processed in their system. So it's it's a very strategic, very business um, sensitive, very 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 uh, a key to many businesses out there. Ninety-nine of the top hundred companies have some level of, of SAP uh, involved in their in their day-to-day running of their business. So um, they they also claim that eighty percent of of their customers are small and medium-sized enterprises. So. They're just a master of, of ERPs, which is our enterprise resource uh, planning and, and programming. So anything that's business strategic for the company goes through through a software, through SAP software, essentially. Wow. So that, for those people who may not have, have realized it, I mean, obviously SAP is critical to businesses. Um, but I'm, I'm curious, fine, okay, we have lots of important things like, you know, email. Why... Is monitoring of SAP such a challenge for so many folks? Well, the distinction is so. So, so with 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 SAP softwares, they're, they're business criticals. It's it's the ability to make money, to 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 pay your bills, to get to get paid, to to create your orders, um, and because it's a very specific type of technology, companies or are, are, there, there's a level of expertise that is required for that SAP systems. And in many organizations, they may, um, they're very critical, but they're also treated and managed in the silo. It's that, that, oh, SAP, I'm not going there. I'm not gonna touch it because we need that SAP expertise. Because if it goes down, man, it's gonna kill our business, our, our ability to process orders and whatnot, right? So, right. and when those incidents occur, incidents occur in any, as in any other system, it also takes a long time to detect or to attribute what the error is or even to resolve those issues because they're treated as a, oh, we got to call the SAP expert. He got to go in there and check it out and, and, and specifically down, you know, what system it is and, and go into individual systems. And it, it really takes a lot of time, effort. It's very manual, very time consuming. So it's also very hard to understand the impact that the SAPs have on customer experience and businesses because it just goes down really. And, and then you have these um, manual stitching of data to create some level of visibility to create a, a dashboard. And so it's very time consuming. So what we're proposing is to bring something, something new to the market that complements solutions manager, as the name tells you, it's more than just observability, right? So we're providing uh, provisioning and deployment is also very simple because we're using uh, data sources that are already available in an SAP. So for, for, from a business process flow, like I was saying, it, it, if those interruptions in IDOCs or RFCs or batch jobs occur, business users are usually the first person to see that error. So it's, it's an analyst. It's a business analyst up there just kind of checking things out. It's like, something happened. I can't see why it stopped. So they go to IT and say, hey, IT, the business process is not working. And the IT person is going to say, okay, what system is it? The business analyst doesn't know because they don't have that expertise of the infrastructure of how it occurs. So that, that loses a lot of translation, Leon. And mm -hmm. so, so it's right. really and, hard And what to... you just defined, sorry, but what you just defined is like the worst of the bad paths of monitoring, right? User notices system is no longer working. Tell somebody who tells somebody who tells somebody. Like, I think monitoring needs to do a little more here than, <laughs> than that, right? We're totally. We need to be able to trace those issues, you know, for a transaction, for order, for invoice levels, and the impact it has across the business. It, it really isn't just, and, and to, to be frank, we have to be proactive and not reactive. Oh, shucks, the, everything shut down. We need to go find the error. No, we need to see when the systems are slowing down, when they're able to, Oh, maybe there's a there's an issue here. Let's address this. There's a me, there, there's a memory consumption issue here. Let's go and address it before it becomes this this you know tragedy event. There's this 
catastrophic event, right? So just, just to recap, so some of the, the manual process to find that root cause, uh, you know, requires some digging and many screens to lock into and the tribal knowledge and skills. Oh, I know it's that little system over there in that corner that's always been a little hiccup. So I'll go there first. If someone doesn't have that, it's really, really hard for us to monitor and manage SAP instances. And again, if it falls, it's business critical. You're not making money. You're not getting uh, deals done. You're, you're really hurting the business. You're not hiring people. You're not paying people. So it's really, really impactful to the business. And I know a long-winded answer, so sorry for that. No, 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 but it's, it's really necessary. Because again, I think that for a lot of the folks watching this episode, having that background of you know, why SAP is so incredibly critical to businesses and all the things that it does, and then also why it's so hard to, you know, it's been traditionally so hard to monitor, sets up the context for my next question, which is, it, I'm guessing, because we're having this episode, that we at New Relic have a particular way of approaching this. So I want to talk now about not necessarily what it looks like just yet, we will get there, but how we chose to approach this challenge of monitoring such an incredibly complex, but also incredibly sensitive and important system. So Samir, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, the way that we went about tackling this challenge? For sure. Thanks, Dion. <clears throat> and thanks, Alan, for that great description of how SAP <laughs> users live. Uh, you know, when we first started tackling this problem, we didn't just start building an integration to SAP or start writing code. We actually spent many months talking to numerous of our large enterprise customers. We, we actually just listened. And we started to really hear a common theme from our customers across them. Uh, one of them was that we want this solution to be really non-invasive. And that really, I'll, I'll describe what that means, but it really resonated with us our team because our team on average has about 25 years average of working in the SAP space. So we really live and breathe SAP and love the SAP system and architectures. And when we heard, you know, we want this to be non-invasive, it made a lot of sense to us. We felt the same way that, you know, if we're installing monitoring software, we don't want itself to add complexity or overhead to the SAP system. There's enough going on in the SAP system and enough complexity. So we don't need to add more overhead. So that was really the first, and it was really a common theme throughout. Um, and then secondly, we heard that we want this solution to be delivered end to end from New Relic. We don't want bits and pieces by other, other you know, companies. And um, we want it end to end delivered with, with our trusted partner. Uh, we don't want to have to license multiple softwares or systems. We want it really simple to consume. And, you know, um, <laughs> uh, so that was a, really the second thing. And then the third thing we heard was, you know, we want this to be this, a stamp of approval from SAP themselves. We want this to be certified from it by SAP. So we just, okay. we, we continuously heard that. And really that's a lot of that went into the philosophy of, uh, of our designs and architecture and what Kevin and I will show you today. Awesome. Um, and I think you've got some, some slides here to mm -hmm. talk through. Yes, yes, indeed. So I'll just uh, take a few moments and give um, the audience an overview of, of our approach and uh, how the solution looks, okay? So first of all, uh, we have really strived to combine multiple layers of visibility of the SAP system together in a common view, okay? So you, our solution, as you, as you see on the left, is called New Relic Monitoring for SAP Solutions. That's the certified product that we have uh, that we're delivering to our customers. And it combines, as you can see on the pyramid on the right, multiple layers. It provides the infrastructure monitoring, as you can see on the bottom left, it combines application monitoring as well as business process monitoring. So this provides, this full stack end-to-end -end monitoring provides a really consolidated view end-to-end -end of how this, both the system and the processes are running. Uh, 
uh, systems, applications, and processes. So if you look at the infrastructure layer, we're providing visibility into all the layers at the underlying uh, infrastructure level, like the SAP system level, application server instances, database, hosts, et cetera. And the application monitoring really starts getting interesting because we're providing visibility into the key components of the SAP system that keep processes running, such as transactions, intermediate docs, known as IDOCs, um, RFCs, queues, background jobs, et cetera. These are the lifeblood of SAP. And when, when there's issues at this, uh, on what we call these application components or entities, then really business processes get halted. And then all the bad things that Alan started mentioning, you know, there's really hard dollar impacts in the organization when um, these application um, uh, entities experience issues. So that's the second layer that we monitor. And then what we do is we combine the infrastructure and application uh, entities into business process views. We're intelligently tagging from the SAP system these entities to their relevant business processes so that, um, you know, especially for IT, they get a very good context of the business. So if the business side, if they, you know, the business will just say, hey, our customers are not getting order confirmations. So where does IT start to resolve and, and look for uh, issues? They can start in the order to cash view. Or if they get a notice that, hey, our um, accounts payable is experiencing slowness in their inbox, where do they start? Well, they can take a look at that. And, and that, those views give them access to all the application and infrastructure uh, entities underlying that process as well. So we've chose to provide a common view for both IT and business to be looking at together. So they're not a siloed, um, they're all looking at the same views. So that's, that's one of our design and philosophy approaches. Next is the next concept that we've really tried to employ is providing the proverbial single pane of glass view across systems. So, you know, when, when people hear about SAP, they think it's, you know, you know, one system. SAP is not. SAP is a massive ecosystem of uh, really best of breed, you know, um, components across different functional areas. So, you know, you can have your core ECC or S4 systems, but then there are many other systems such as PIPO and others. So rather, rather than having to have monitoring of each, you know, system separately, we, com we, we combine that, all that landscape into a common view. And then we actually combine that with non-SAP systems as well. So I gave the example of accounts payable earlier, that AP inbox could have an issue due to an imaging server. Or in your warehouse management, there can be an issue with RF scanners that's causing you know, slowness in, uh, in loading trucks. So trucks are not um, shipping goods as fast. So you can have that end-to-end -end view through our platform. That's really what our customers are looking for. Um, yeah, and then the other thing that I'll mention, which we'll um, see if Kevin can actually show you, is that um, yeah, how we set it up is we provide proactive alerting through dynamic baselining. So we heard from a lot of customers that, hey, we get you know, a lot of noisy alerts. You know, everything's red, but the system's still running. So where do we focus our attention? Whereas um, the power of the new Relic platform with features like dynamic baselining allow us to automatically learn the system over, over days or, or time. And it actually um, drastically reduces the number of the noise and you, so you can focus on really what matters. Um, and then the other thing, the other design concept that we've tried to employ is really fast root cause resolution. We're trying to get to three or four clicks to resolve a problem. Uh, and provide the blast radius of everything necessary around that problem to be able to get to fast resolution. So rather than you know digging into a dozen different screens and logging into multiple systems, it's all available together, um, and we guide the user um, through the information necessary to resolve that problem. That's another concept. And then the third concept, addressing that non-invasive type of request from our customers, 
is that we have settled on an agentless architecture. That's how we chose to solve that problem. Um, often not not straightforward to do, but you know we um, took took on that challenge, and um, we're happy to say that our customers are quite pleased about this architecture. And what what this means is that you know a, um, a typical organization will have numerous SAP systems, you know, possibly dozens or at times hundreds of different SAP systems, production systems. And that's what's represented by these circles with the SAP logo in it. Those are what we call the monitored systems. That's what we're monitoring. So in those monitored systems, with our architecture, we do not need to install any agents in those systems. We have uh, 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 figured out and worked with SAP to um, design a solution that allows us to install our um, connector, our solution only on a central monitoring system. We just need one SAP, um, let's say ABAP server uh, with an ABAP stack that will, um, in which we can install our uh, central connector and that will leverage um, uh, existing data sources from SAP that SAP already delivers um, to to collect that telemetry data from those uh, monitored systems. And then it collects it, scrubs it, uh, rationalizes it, intelligently tags that data to its relevant business process, and then feeds that into our uh, powerful telemetry data platform, um, our new Relic platform. On, uh, onto which then we bring the power of all our visualizations, um, uh, which Kevin will give you a feel for. Um, so that this agentless architecture, our customers um, really <laughs> uh, embrace because, you know, the SAP basis team, frankly, they don't want, um, you know, to create complexity and overhead in those prod systems. So it's a very neat, tidy way um, and frankly, uh, it also allows us to, to install our solution within, you know, one to two hours. Um, and it's very easy to install trial and get up and running. Um, yeah. And so the architecture is quite simple and, and elegant in that sense. And, and it hits all the points that you said at the beginning from our listening tour. Um, and also we avoid something that, you know, putting on my sysadmin hat is the observer bias, right? You know, like, oh, there's another thing running on this critical system that I'm now going to suspect is probably, you know, like we're, we're sort of dodging around all of those um, issues as we go, which is really, you know, nice to see. So, yeah. um, and, and, yeah. and one last thing is that sure. this is, and uh, this is the solution that's now certified by SAP as well, to your point about how we've ticked, ticked all those boxes. Yes. Very cool. That that never hurts to have, you know, something like that, that the, the people that were monitoring saying, yeah, this is the one that we think you should use. That's, it's always a, a nice to have that, uh, that uh, stamp of approval. So I, I think we're at the point where I and, and hopefully the audience really want to see how this works. And you've sort of name checked Kevin several times and said that he's going to show us stuff. So Kevin, I, I think you're kind of on the spot here. Um, can you can you show us the the glory and the amazement of it? I'm just, just going to go straight to full screen. Uh, take us on a tour if you can. Yeah, and thanks for that intro, Leon. Um, just to set the stage for what Kevin will uh, walk us through. Um, one last piece I'll mention about our design philosophy here is that we think with our agentless architecture, we built a best in class way of extracting telemetry data. Um, safely, elegantly out of SAP. On top of that, we wanted to marry the, uh, you know, our best in class visualizations and bring that to bear. And the fact that we've built that connector and we know the visualization, we've been able to really have that tight integration end to end. And some of the visualizations and these visualizations, although what Kevin's going to show you is we have this out of the box. So as I said, it's quickly up and running. It's very easy for our customers to extend, uh, customize, tailor um, to their particular needs. Any telemetry data that's frankly available in SAP, we have access to that. Um, it's, it becomes very easy to, uh, to, to set up. The f and the, a number of the visualizations are very powerful. The first one 
we're going to start with is frankly just uh, some dashboards just to show you the power of the, the data and how it, it can be um, visualized. So Kevin, I'll, I'll let you take over and show us some of the dashboard. Okay. Uh, thanks, Amir. Um, yeah, as he said, uh, that we uh, not only piped in all the very important uh, SAP data in, onto the Neuralic uh, platform, we also uh, pre-built some of those visualizations. Uh, these are, you know, this is what give uh, our customers when they doing that one or two hours installation that they can immediately see the results uh, of the uh, data extracted and the data presented here. So. Uh, you can see that the, we built a series of the uh, uh, dashboards that uh, representing the monitoring of the systems and also the applications and the I iDocs and uh, uh, system instance, database, uh, jobs and transactions. And here I'm showing you, uh, you can see on the screen, here it is for the SAP application server instance. Um, and we care about, in the server instance, we care about the uh, uh, something called a work processor. It's a kind of like virtual CPU that uh, that processes all the uh, transactions and the, and the jobs. Uh, then the memories are used by these processors and uh, uh, users log on to the uh, the server instance. Uh, response time, obviously. Uh, we actually extracted all kinds of uh, all the logs to the neural network, uh, and we here. Uh, specifically for the server instances, we can present uh, these logs uh, filtered by a specific uh, server instance that you are interested in. Um, and you can see that uh, we're getting the, not only system logs, the application logs, and we also get the, uh, uh, the web services uh, logs, runtime errors, uh, just to give you a few of the examples here. Um, yeah, so this is a little glimpse of the uh, dashboard that's great, Kevin. I think it would be good next to um, get into what we call entities. So within New Relic, we have a very powerful uh, visual construct that we call entities. So every uh, application layer and um, infrastructure component, as it passes into our telemetry data platform, we synthesize it in the form of entities and tie it to its relationship to other entities as well. And once it's an entity form, we can do very powerful um, uh, value added on it, such as adding alerts to those entities. So maybe you could show us some of these entities, Kevin, and, and talk about how uh, we can set up dynamic baselining on those alerts. Okay, thanks, Amir. Uh, so we, uh, for the SAP, we, uh, for the SAP monitoring, our group, uh, set up a, a series of SAP specific entities. So these are the entities specific to the uh, SAP systems and also SAP applications. And you can see here, uh, they're neatly grouped uh, under the SAP uh, folder here. Uh, okay, order for, open it up. Uh, we have here, we have the application servers, uh, background jobs and uh, uh, HTTP destinations, IDOCs, RFC destinations, RFC queues, databases. Uh, so uh, all the important uh, monitoring subjects are uh, captured here. Uh, and when you look at the entities, and on the right hand side, I'm uh, displaying all the uh, application server instance uh, entities, that you can see that we have something called the uh, uh, golden metrics that uh, constantly monitoring the health of uh, these entities. Um, and also these entities, uh, as Samir just mentioned, that, that uh, uh, we'd be able to set up alerts against these uh, entities. You can see it here. And the alerts is actually given the health indicators, uh, which represented on the, uh, as the uh, colored uh, red, yellow, or green uh, to those uh, entities. So that uh, here, and we can see the warning uh, alert uh, on the QAS uh, instance here. Uh, will make this particular QS uh, server instance a uh, yellow. Okay, so uh, let's take a look out of all these, how the uh, alerts are set up in Neuralic. And it's, uh, we have prepackaged about 17 uh, alerts with our uh, entities and uh, distributed entities here. Um, 
one of the cool things that in New Relic is uh, not only we can just set up a, a threshold uh, to trigger the alerts. For example, if there is an error, say for example, there's a failed job and if there's an error uh, in the job, then we'll trigger a alert automatically. But we also be able to trigger the alert based on baselines. Uh, and this is especially useful when you're trying to monitor the, uh, the performance of some of these entities. And of one example here, you can see that slow processing of background job. Uh, let's get into that quickly. And for the for the background job, so what we what are we doing is we're um, uh, collecting a baseline of uh, a response time of uh, these background jobs, and then uh, we're setting up the alerts not based on a specific threshold, but based on a deviation from that uh, baseline. And uh, that baseline can be uh, the deviation threshold can be easily adjusted either by typing a, a number here or, or just using this slide to say more violation, I wanna see more violation or I wanna see fewer violation. Uh, that makes it very intuitive and uh, and our uh, customers really appreciate uh, these these kind of capability they would not be able to do before uh, inside of SAP using the solution manager, manager for example. That's great, Kevin. While we're on application servers, why don't we show another um, very important uh, uh, function, which is around our traces? And if you can maybe describe how we use, uh, how we assemble traces, how we make them available, and how they can really help with root cause resolution. As I mentioned earlier, trying to get to three or four clicks to root cause. Oh, that's yeah, that's great. Uh, so. Uh, all of these entities, one of the thing is uh, we collecting data inside of a SAP, uh, which will, will uh, generate a, uh, a trace, end-to-end uh, -end trace, um, to follow through all these programs executing through the uh, uh, SAP systems. Um, in a, here, from the entity of this particular uh, server instance, um, I can see that uh, uh, whenever the program is executing uh, on that particular server instance, uh, we will have a trace generated and that trace um, is referenced, referencing this particular entity. And we can see that there's a whole bunch of, a lot of different kind of a, a trace that referencing this particular server instance. Um, let's just pick a example here uh, of a RFC call. And these are the uh, some of the RFC calls as executed on the, this particular server instance. And you can see that uh, uh, the way we assemble it is we getting a performance database from SAP. And in the performance database, uh, they have um, the execution times of each of the steps uh, when executing uh, that particular uh, program. And we string them together, uh, that becomes a trace for us. So you can see it right here, that uh, that we see that this program uh, gets started and loaded, uh, loaded into the uh, work processor uh, of that uh, SAP application server instance. Uh, then it executes a specific RFC function module. And, and this function module, you can see that majority of uh, this particular uh, execution, majority of the time was spending uh, executing that particular function module on this uh, RFC destination. So we can even drill down into it, um, looking at the attributes uh, passed from the SAP, uh, we'll be able to see that which uh, function uh, SAP is executing, which takes that much time. And uh, this is actually a, a alert SAM triggering a function module, uh, which takes a long time. And if there is a problem, we feel like performance issues in the system that here we can easily trace back uh, to the specific uh, uh, functions that are having the problem and pass on to the uh, application support groups and that they can look into this further. 
That's great. Thank you, Kevin. Maybe let's shift gears to a little higher level onto the business process side of things. Um, you know, we have this concept, uh, another visualization with a new relic, which is extremely powerful, which is what we call workloads. And workloads are virtual groupings of various entities, as we just showed you. So um, all the different SAP entities, we, we now make them available out of the box in, in the form of two different types of views. One is what we call system views, and another is what we call business process views. So uh, maybe, Kevin, you can take it away and share with us one of those uh, example system views um, to, sh uh, to show the, um, the benefits of that. Uh, sure, Samir. Uh, so let's take a look. The workloads is basically a collection of the entities that we just see. You know, here that in the workloads we have one workloads for the system. It's called uh, QS systems. Uh, we have other workloads uh, uh, in uh, we can create for other systems, also business processes. Um, here you can see that uh, uh, we have clusters of these entities that based on the, the type uh, what, uh, of those entities. Here we have the IDOCs, background jobs, uh, the databases, SAP transactions, RFC uh, destination calls, RFC queues. Um, and the one of the great things about this workload is that immediately you have a bird's eye view of what's happening with this QAS system. Uh, you can see that uh, we have some alerting events happening with some of those IDOCs and they're turning red. Uh, some of the background jobs also turning red. And, and you can be focusing on those immediately. And one of the things I always say that uh, uh, this workload can help the monitoring uh, people who are like basis admins is that they don't have to be worried about constantly getting bombarded by uh, the alert emails. And they can come out here to focusing on the, the alerts that really they care about uh, instead of have to be worried about all the noisy uh, notifications they always get. So this is a very powerful tool that uh, for uh, for the admin admins to uh, monitoring the systems and also the processes. And they can, uh, whenever they're in here, they can actually drill down into these uh, these entities and they can see the alerts are triggering, make these uh, particular entity red. Uh, they can even uh, drill down even more and go into the details and look into those entities as well. Hey, that's great, Kevin. Thank you for that. Why, while we're on entities, why don't we share another view that our customers really find beneficial in that uh, the activity view, which shows actually the correlation uh, between all the different, um, but the, the key metrics between all the ent uh, different entities for um, correlation and, and fast root cause. Sure, Samir. Um, so we can click on this to get into the activity view here. Uh, that here, that what you can see is basically, uh, we already know that every single entity has got golden metrics and then we assemble all these golden metrics neatly on a single page here. Uh, so that they, uh, we can zoom in on a problem and uh, all the other charts and diagrams will also uh, uh, zoom in accordingly. And for example, here we see a spike uh, with the dialogue response time right here. Then we want to know what, what causes that particular spike. And what we can do is, what we can do is we can zoom in to the spike here and and with that zoom in that you can see, we also zoomed in with the user's login and also with the errors, error counts happening at the same time. So, so that uh, by looking at this, uh, that we'll be able to correlate uh, any system errors in the system and also user activities uh, mm -hmm. uh, that will cause these kind of a uh, uh, spike in the response time. Yes, that's right. And that saves a ton of time and really gets to root cause fast. And everyone's looking at the same information uh, as opposed to having to log into, you know, many different systems and piece things together, uh, both SAP and non-SAP. We can bring non-SAP systems into the same workload views. Um, so that really makes it um, a very powerful. 
especially when you have the business process views to showing all the entities, both SAP and non related to a business process. So we'll turn it back over to you, Leon. Hopefully that's been a, a good. It was certainly educational for me. And, and I want to say that like, that is a lot, right? And, and I imagine that um, folks who are just starting out with this are going to be both digesting and also learning how to leverage just what we've shown today for quite a while. But we all know the work is never done. Um, so I got to ask, what's next? You know, where do we see all this headed in the future? Where, where do we believe that we're going to be able to capitalize even more or improve even more? That's great. Well, you're right. Uh, we're not resting by any means. Uh, we believe we have uh, something quite powerful for our existing customers and, and new customers to really uh, uh, benefit from monitoring core, you know, SAP systems. But, you know, SAP themselves is a great company and, um, and really pushing into the future as well. SAP is moving uh, heavily into cloud, uh, into um, many more specialized systems, Java-based systems, other technologies. And we're actually mirroring our roadmap um, for the benefit of our of our joint customers uh, in that area as well. So we're moving into um, the BTP business technology platform uh, and other SAP cloud-based uh, systems and monitoring of those systems. So that's really one a giant vector in our in our um, future. The other one is that. Um, if, uh, our customers, while SAP is really a cornerstone and, um, uh, and, and is really there to drive the majority of, um, of the business processes, they also have other systems such as Salesforce and other ERP systems. So we're actively uh, building connectors into other systems as well because our customers um, want to use uh, New Relic really as that end-to-end -end central uh, uh, monitoring point. And by having those connectors into other systems, we'll be able to show process flows um, and b business KPIs across multiple ERP systems. How is an order flowing from one uh, system into another system and then maybe into a warehouse management system or distribution system? So being able to track that uh, distributed trace across multiple systems. So really those are the two really strong vectors that uh, um, we're, we're pushing into the future. Excellent. Okay, so that takes us to the changelog lightning round. Uh, this is where you get to share any final thoughts, something you want folks to know before uh, we shut it down. I'm gonna start, I just remind everyone that Alan invited everyone to his house for a Brazilian barbecue. I personally intend to take him up on that. Um, but you know, the choice is yours, but that is, that is my final thought for this episode, but, uh, let's see, uh, uh Alan, I'll let you, uh, retort if you need to, uh, what are your final thoughts? Yeah, sure. Uh, barbecue is always fun. Uh, but for those that want to know more information on the solution, I invite you to take a look at newrelic.com under solutions there. We have a landing page with tons of information and links to our documentation and links to to um, uh, our launch blog and whatnot. So just go and check us out and, you know, ping us if you have any questions. Um, but yeah, as a product marketer, I had to throw in that marketing pitch. So thanks for Very the good. opportunity. I'll, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll say my piece that I'm just hoping Kevin survives his key, uh, crazy endurance sports because uh, <laughs> I really need him by my side as we uh, push forward into the space. So Kevin, please be careful. Yeah, I will be back. That's my final <laughs> words. <laughs> okay, okay. He will. He will survive. He will pursue. He will uh, keep pursuing onward. Okay. okay. Well, I want to thank all three of you for taking some time to speak uh, with me and with the audience today on the show. I also want to thank everyone watching. There are an overwhelming number of choices of video content uh, for you to consume these days, maybe even binge. And here at New Relic, we want to thank you for spending some of your precious time with us today. If you've enjoyed the show today, don't forget to subscribe so you can get notifications of new episodes when they drop. For New Relic Changelog, I'm Liana Dotto.